Hey chemistry students, this is video 4-1 and we are beginning chapter 4 which is the arrangement of electrons and atoms and we're going to look at how electrons behave and how we can visually tell what electrons are doing just based on what we see. And we can really start looking at this on a flame test demonstration. So I'd like to show you a short video here about flame tests and then look at the results and talk about why we see those results based on what electrons are doing. So here's a short video about the flame tests and how we can tell what electrons are doing based on the colors we observe. Very dramatic version of the flame test demonstration here. First we have alcohol burning blue, then we have a barium, some barium chloride with barium ions burning a uh, yellow, a dirty yellow color. Then we have boron being green, uh, strontium giving us the crimson red color. Next is calcium giving us the orange. Uh, not showing up very well here in the next one, but the red tints inside of that orange there, there's some impurities there. That is lithium. Next we have sodium giving us a characteristic yellow flame. Then we have copper with its green color. And finally, potassium with the purple or lilac shade. So let's look at some of those results there that we saw in that video. And I believe the first three that, that were shown in the video here were barium, boron, and strontium. Now each one of these elements burned a different color. Barium was yellow, boron's green, and strontium was red. Now the question is, why is that? Why do we have different colors based on just burning of these elements. And we're going to try and answer that throughout the video, but keep that in your minds. Now to start with, we need to look at two basic definitions that you need to have and need to understand. That electrons are found in different places around the nucleus of an atom. And the first place that we look for, that we know actually where electrons are, it's called in the ground state. And that is the lowest possi possible energy level that an electron can be in. So that's at the, the closest to the nucleus. It's in the lowest level. And, and we'll look at some pictures to, to describe this. But right now, just get the definition now. The excited state then, well, that means the electron is at a higher energy level. It's actually jumped up an energy level. And that is where you would look to find an excited electron. And Based on what colors we view, we can get a really, a really good estimation as to where these electrons are at, at what levels they're at. And that really plays into our knowledge of, of the visible light spectrum and, and what we know about light and how we view it and see it. So let's look here at basically the visible light spectrum. Now, we know white light here is all colors of the spectrum. When you look at the sun, you see basically what we call white light. But we know that is not just white light, it's actually the Roy G. Biv. And this is important here to, to note this, you need to write this down, that red is a lower energy level than violet. The frequency increases from red to violet. So we increase energy as we go across our visible light spectrum. Now, the reason that you see all white is because it's reflected, not absorbed by the surface that the white light rays are striking. So when you look at a wall and it's white, or this, this screen that is white, it, you're, you're seeing all the light, red to violet, because it's all being reflected. Now, individual colors are seen when a surface absorbs all the light that strikes it, except the color of the wavelength that the surface is reflecting back into your eye. So right now, for example, um, with, with my blue tie, you, you're seeing blue here because it is, it is absorbing red, orange, yellow, green, indigo, and violet. And it reflects back the blue so that the light rays are coming, hitting my tie, going to you, and that is why you see blue. Same reason you see green grass, because it is absorbing all of the light except green. Red, again, a red rose, absorbing all of the colors except red. 
and that's being reflected back into your eye. Now we can look at this kind of on the electromagnetic spectrum, which really, what does that mean? What does electromagnetic mean? And, and this is something that you need to jot down here. This is important that light behaves as both a particle and a wave. So we think of, of everything like atoms are little particles or little pieces made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. And, and we can kind of think of light as the same way. We, we can call it a photon, which is like a particle of light. But we also need to know that it behaves in, in a wave format, which really means that it travels in a wave format, but it, it can be looked at or viewed as a small little particle as well that, that travels through the air or in outer space travels through a vacuum. And here we have our visible spectrum. So this is a little reversed in our Roy G. Biv but it, it's still visible here. This is what we can see. And we see that across the spectrum that you have your gamma rays, your x-rays, all the way down here to your, there's where TV and radio are at, right there. They're not actually harmful to us. Some people think that they are, but they are not harmful. Um, they're, they're down here. So we actually view at a higher frequency than, than we do at um, what we communicate with. So that's another thing that you could jot down. That's important to know. It's useful that when you talk on your cell phone, it's not frying your brain or anything. You're actually fine um, in dealing with that. All right. But I wanted to show you here on our spectrum that remember from red to violet, we're increasing in frequency. The, the crests of the wave, they're passing the point faster and faster, and it's an increase in frequency. Well, let's look here at, and we'll kind of scroll up here so it's not too much at once. Let's look at here who kind of came up with this idea of the electromagnetic spectrum that waves and particles are both made up of light and, and where did this all come from and still why do we see certain colors? Why when we burn boron um, do, do we get a specific color from that? And really we can talk about here uh, Bohr. We've talked about Bohr and his planetary model of the atom before, but I want to look at really how it's changed over time. And Bohr said that electrons only circle the nucleus in orbits, which we now know is incorrect. That's not true. They do not stay in just one specific orbit. Um, there's actually a, a cloud about where they're at, and, and we'll look at that a little later, but that is incorrect. You need to note that, that that is incorrect. We actually know more of the quantum model, which is the electrons are in energy clouds, basically. That you can find an electron in a cloud around the nucleus. And you should have, in the previous chapters, learned a little bit or at least reviewed the quantum model of the atom and be familiar with that. But make sure you note that. Write it down. Pause the video and write that down if you don't know. Other things that, that Bohr said, and then we're going to kind of look at a, a diagram that explains this. Bohr said that electrons, we have absorption and emission of photons causes electrons to move from the ground state to ex the excited state. Now remember here, we have already noted here what the ground state means and what the excited state means. We already know that. Here, you need to get the definitions of absorption and emission of photons. They're caused by some type of light entering an atom. For electrons to reach the excited state, they must absorb a minimum amount of energy. This is something that you should note, write down, and we're going to talk about it in the diagram on the next page. But be familiar here that in order to get an ele electron excited, it has to absorb a minimum amount of energy. And then the further an electron is from the nucleus, the more energy it has. Again, we talked about the ground state, which is your low energy, and the excited state, which is high energy. Okay, High energy. So that's where D comes into play there, low energy and high energy. Let's look here at this diagram. What is it talking about? Well, we have here these five that we just talked about, these 
one and then these four parts here of how Bohr changed um, the model of the atom. And I want to apply that here to the Bohr model of the atom when we have absorption and emission. So in absorption, we have an electron that is entering the atom. And we have an, uh, I'm sorry, a photon, excuse me, a photon that is entering the atom, and it is going to hit that electron right there. And it's going to bump that electron up into its excited state. So this is the ground state of the electron right here, nearest the nucleus of the atom. The electron then gets excited by a photon because the photon has energy. It excites the electron, jumps up to a higher energy state, right? Now, that electron does not stay there. It does not stay jumped up in this higher, higher energy state because the energy, it, it, it needs to still escape. That's not where the electron's supposed to be. So it falls back down to its ground state. And as it falls, energy of the photon is emitted or released. So the, the basic idea here is that an electron comes in, so a little electron comes in, it bounces up, right? This is a, a photon actually, I keep saying electron, I apologize here. A photon comes in to an atom, it bumps up my electron to a higher energy site. So now it's excited. Well, that electron that's now up here doesn't like to be there. That's not where it's from. It wants to go back down to its ground state. And when that happens, energy is given off, right here, energy of the photon is given off, and it's released. And this is where you have that emission occurring. So we can look at another example that kind of explains this as well, if you're still struggling here with the idea that um, think of it this way. The electron, again, it, it starts here. The, a light ray is going to come in, strike the electron, and it's going to jump up to a higher energy state. Again, that electron does not want to stay in the excited state. It wants to go back down to the ground state. And when that happens, when it goes back down to the ground state, right there, this is where we have some sort of emission, right? We have emission here. And it does not want to stay in the excited state, so it goes back down, and that light that came in is emitted out, and we can actually calculate that frequency that it's emitted at. And that's the idea here of, of electrons and, and seeing them. Um, why we see different colors? Well, that's because when we enter in a certain amount of energy, we get that energy back out in the emission, and that's part of the visible light spectrum. And depending on what frequency it is, that's what we see. That's why we see different colors when we do flame tests or when we see that uh, occurring. So that's the first part here of the atoms and looking at really the, the idea here that electrons can, can move energy levels and allow us to see certain colors that we see.